My name is Brian Johnson. I'm the CEO and co-founder here at Divi Cloud. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the strategy of cloud adoption and how we're helping large enterprise organizations achieve self-service while remaining secure and compliant. Chris Dramas, my co-founder, and I started Divi Cloud in 2013. I had been at Electronic Arts for seven years. Chris had been there for six. Um, and we had worked together running these massive multiplayer online games. We went through this migration process. Uh, we allowed one of the engineering organizations to sort of, run their own, sort of run their own process to get the next game out the door. And almost immediately we saw a massive security problem. It was that while we have been in IT for the last 15 years, learning how to run these large massive systems, the engineering team had never done that before. They just sort of gave us code and we deployed it. So all of a sudden, overnight, these engineering organizations go from just giving us code to run out in the infrastructure that we have hardened, that we have literally like laid our lives down for. Uh, they call, you know, called server huggers because you made sure the server never went down. Um, these engineering organizations who had all these amazing ideas overnight became in charge of the infrastructure of their own products. However, the downside was as you started to pull back the, sort of the, the layers to look at the infrastructure, you found these massive security issues. Um, that just were not being taken into consideration. Compliance issues that the engineering team had no idea what PCI compliance was. And all these different elements. And so we saw that, and that was when we started looking at each other and said, look, we gotta go solve this problem. We need to leave EA, we need to go and build a product to help large enterprise organizations adopt cloud because we saw the benefits and the value in self-service. But we also saw the pitfalls. There was no going back to the engineering team and saying, you can't do this anymore, sorry. You had to continue to move forward. So we left Electronic Arts. When we looked at the competitive landscape, what we saw that there was a lot of products that were solving the problem through sort of more traditional techniques. Things that we would have done when we were running a data center. Things like reporting. Really fancy reports that told you all the problems you had. The challenge is, is that in data center that worked because the number of anomalies you had were so low. You had 10, 15 problems you were dealing with a week because quite frankly, the only people touching the infrastructure were like the 40 people in some dark black room somewhere. Uh, and so you knew who was touching the infrastructure. Fast forward to where we are today. These enterprise organizations uh, have thousands of people touching the infrastructure and making all sorts of changes and not really understanding the, the depth and breadth of the changes they're making and the impact that they're gonna have. What we learned was that you couldn't predict what the future was gonna be. Um, you could try and you could try to use everything under your power to analyze what users wanna play or whatever but you might get it wrong. I mean, for example, I don't think anybody knows why Fruit Ninja was super successful, but it was. So how do you deal with that in the game industry? You deal with it by developing platform and then iterating on top of that platform very rapidly until you figure out what works. Well, that's what we did with our product. We built the platform first, the data unification and the automation engine, everything that went with it. I'm not ashamed to say that we were left out of numerous venture capital offices at the beginning of that process. I think there was a lot of fear early in the market about a couple of things. One. Um, that Amazon was going to rule the world. So why would we build anything that's multi-cloud? We felt differently. When we were Electronic Arts, all of our stuff was already multi-cloud. We had the private cloud that we ran, we were using Amazon, we were looking at Azure. So we believed the enterprise world was going to be multi-cloud. The second part is automation. A lot of people were afraid of automation because we've, it's not like automating these problems hasn't been something we've tried to do before. We have. It's just the risk-reward analysis wasn't right. When there were only 40 people touching your infrastructure and you only had so few problems, automating those problems didn't make a lot of sense because you might screw something up and then you'd shut down a service or whatever it might be. But, but now, with the risk so much greater, with headlines literally showing up every day about different organizations having data leaks or whatever it might be, the risk is so much greater. So that need and, and ability and desire to go ahead and do the automation to remediate those risks, is, that is something that's acceptable now. And not only is it acceptable, it's required. It wasn't until we got our very first customer, which was General Electric, where we got to see cloud operating at scale and what that meant. And we got to see that they were just being completely inundated with security issues they couldn't keep up with. And so when we engaged with them at the time, they were wanting to build what they call the bot army. And they built that bot army on top of our platform. And you can sort of think about these as just little tiny bots that were like crawling their infrastructure, looking for problems, and it found it, it would solve them. We said, this is amazing, and this is a great use of our platform. How do we productize that? How do we make it easy to use? How do we make it so that building a bot was easy and something that could be rolled out really quickly? So we took a lot of that information back and we, we built sort of a second iteration of our product and we took it to market solving security issues along this pet area. And what we discovered is nobody else was doing it this way. If you turn our software off instead of our customers, it's literally like losing an employee. 
There's someone not there taking care of the problems that need to be taken care of. We've been doing this for five years now, and one of the things we've learned through that process is this is such a bigger problem than just a migration strategy or an engineering team using cloud. We see all of our customers leverage cloud in such meaningful ways, their whole culture changes. The company, what products they take to market, what products they, they choose to leave behind, how they grow their products, their customer base change. All these things change from their adoption of cloud. We have a customer that I sat down with years ago. It was actually our second customer, Discovery Communications. And I remember sitting down with Dave Duvall, who was the SVP of infrastructure there, and having a conversation with him about, hey, what, what do you actually care about as an IT director? Are you interested in trying to control what your engineers are doing? Or are you interested in controlling the outcome? Meaning that you care that just they, produ they produce applications that are secure, and they deploy applications to infrastructure that are secure. And he said, well, I, I need to be secure. And, and from his perspective, the best way to do that was to control the tool set they were using to do the deployment. And we came in and said, look, that's not true. There's a different way to deal with this problem. If you leverage automation to correct issues in your environment in real time, then you can allow your engineers to use whatever tools they want. And all of a sudden, you can remove yourself from that religious war of, do I use Terraform or are we going to use CloudFormation templates? The engineering team needs to pick what works for them because it also might change based on the cloud they're using, whether it be Azure, whether it be Amazon, they're gonna pick the tooling that's right for them. And the IT organization cannot get involved in that process. What the IT organization can do is enforce policy, and they can do it in real time with automation. Um, so we absolutely encourage our enterprise customers to let their engineers use whatever tools they need to get the job done, because if they do automation correctly, it won't matter. And so at the end of the day, it's about taking a platform that is built to take in data, analyze data, and find problems and provide you the ability to automate against that data uh, and continue to build on top of that over time. The people and the passion they bring to solving that problem ultimately is going to allow this company and this product to be solving the needs of our customers for years to come.